Welcome everyone as you're coming in. We'll get started in just about a minute here. Oh, you know what? It's 3.30. So I'm going to go ahead and do my spiel so I can turn it over to Elizabeth. I want to make sure to thank once again Mobius and the Evergreen Community Development Initiative for their significant sponsorship of their of this event. I'm excited for batches, baskets, book, buckets, book bags, and carousels, which I need to try saying five times fast, was with Elizabeth Thompson. I will go ahead and put our link to our live captions in the chat as well. And uh, as people have questions during Elizabeth's presentation, go ahead and put those in the chat and we'll get to them as we have time. All right, over to you, Elizabeth, thanks. Uh, okay, are you seeing my screen? Yep. Okay, Perfect. great. Uh, okay, I'm gonna be talking about batches, baskets, buckets, and book bags, and then just one small thing about carousels. Um, all of these are containers, they're groups of items or bib records. Um, so for item records, we have a batch, which is a temporary group of items that you pull together, do something to, and then it goes away when you shut the tab. Item buckets, which is a persistent container for items that stays on the system until you actually go in and delete it. And for bibliographic records, we have baskets, which is a temporary group of, whoops, bib records, uh, which um, goes away at the end of your session or when you clear it. Record buckets, which is a persistent container for bib records, stays on the system till you delete it. And book bags, which is the patron version of record buckets. And then carousels, I just have one slight comment to make about them. Um, so for item batches, um, this is usually a project of some kind, like I have a group of items and I want to delete them all. Or I have a group of items that were pulled from the picture book collection because they're going to be in there a separate section uh, because they're alphabet books. So we're going to add a different copy location or prefix or suffix or something or a group of items like summer reading that are going to circulate for a different length of time and perhaps also have a, um, a different location or whatever. So you're trying to achieve something for a group of, of uh, selected items. Um, useful for all different kinds of projects. Um, the thing to always remember about item batches is uh, you close that tab and they're gone. Uh, so you can get to item batches um, by, it, which is the item status screen. Uh, you can get to that from the search menu uh, under search for items by barcode. And I have a batch here. Uh, you have multiple options for creating a batch. Um, maybe the most common is to have a pile of books and a scanner and you're just scanning the items because you're doing something physically with the books as well. You need to relabel them or you're moving them to a different section, putting them on display or whatever. So that is, is uh, certainly an option to scan and they just appear here. Um, we also have two other options, um, and I, I've clicked on both of these little question marks to show you the helpful help. Uh, so one is to upload a text file that has um, one barcode per line, um, and you can do that. And that's actually what I've done here. Um, I had a, a file of barcodes that I uploaded. Um, the other option, which is newer, is that you can um, paste in a list of barcodes that are separated with commas. So if you're working with a CSV source, um, that may be an easier way to do it. Um, you can actually do all three. You could scan a bunch of them and then upload a file and then paste them in or, or whatever. Um, and so this is what the batch looks like. Maybe the most common thing is you're going to select them all and then you're going to go over to the actions menu and do something to all of them. Um, so I'm, I scanned or uploaded all of these. My goal is to delete them all. So I come over to the actions menu. These are all selected and I click delete items. 
that actions menu is actually really long and it has pretty much everything that you could ever possibly want to do to an item. Um, some of these things I have never used, um, but every sort of thing. But this is why this uh, process is so, so good. It's the Swiss Army knife. If you're trying to do something to items, there's probably a batch action for that. You can also um, select a group of items. Now that may mean you just you're maybe you're looking at a report and you know which ones were not found on the shelf and so you want to um, select those individually. Um, often you can um, sort by a column heading to bring together a group of items that have something in common. Um, it could be all the items that are currently checked out or it could be in this case it's the uh, children's graphic novels and I want to do something different to these that I'm going to do to the rest of them. Um, so I just selected that group and then I can choose whatever um, action I want to take on just this group of, of records. Um, if you're going to use that grid, if you're going to sort by different columns or even just to kind of understand what you have on the screen, um, it's very helpful to come over here to this menu that I, I wish it had a name so I could say click on the whatever. So the most useful grid menu here um, and decide which, uh, which columns you actually want to see. This might be exactly what is always set for item status or for a particular project you may need to turn on or off um, additional columns, but it's it's really worth it to get exactly the right set of columns that you want. And you should save columns if, if what you are doing is creating what you want to always see in item status, but you may want to just change something, some columns on the fly for a particular uh, purpose. The other options you have here is print full grid, which will print the list as a table. I, I don't know how often people do this. Um, you would probably want to do it setting the print uh, to be um, landscape, um, but maybe the more common option is to download full CSV. So if you're doing, doing this, you're downloading all the items that um, are in that uh, that grid at the moment, all the all the items, um, and downloading them as a comma separated file that you can open in Excel or Google Sheets or whatever for more advanced formatting or analysis. Um, all of these, both of these options use the current sort order and the current column settings. Uh, so you might want to adjust those just for the purpose of what you want to actually have um, appear in that spreadsheet. Um, for example, if I wanted to present to somebody, here's a list of all those things I deleted for you or I moved to alphabet books or, or whatever, um, you probably wouldn't include the status uh, column because that is um, something that changes as things come and go. There is a print button on that screen. Um, this is probably one of the lesser used uh, item templates and the uh, receipt templates. And the receipt template as configured here is not particularly useful, um, but there may be circumstances where what you want is a quick list to give somebody to go pull selected items from the shelf. And again, this could be with your receipt printer or you might be using a different printer for uh, for for this this receipt, but there there is a receipt template that you can configure for that. Now, as I said, the bad thing about item buckets is they go away. They live in the moment. They dis disappear when you close that tab. So if you accidentally, if you've scanned a hundred items in, and you accidentally open another process in that tab, or you lose power or some other bad thing happens, then your, you know, your, your project is gone. Um, so for anything where you have an ongoing project where you may be interrupted or you have a project that's going to take place over many days or um, anything where you want to go back to the items again, then you really need an item bucket. You need to put them someplace all together 
safe where you can get to them anytime. And that's what an item bucket is. So I'm here in the item status screen. I've selected all my items. And one of my options here is to add them to an item bucket. And when I click on that, I've got two choices here. I can either create a new bucket. So I'm creating this. I typed in the name for I want for my bucket. And I would click on the add to new bucket. Or you have um, the ability to add it to one of the buckets you already have. So this is a drop down that will show me what my buckets are. And if this group of items is part of my Melrose Fiction project, then I would click on that, add these to the selected um, bucket. So this gives you a way to keep using item status and then um, just dropping them in um, uh, you know, periodically so that you don't lose them. Uh, you can also go directly to item buckets. Um, I see I accidentally chopped off the uh, the the, uh, um, the the menu at the top here, but this is um, under the cataloging menu. There's an option for item buckets, and you probably also have an option for item buckets um, on the um, splash page. So this is what the item bucket interface looks like. Um, there's a drop down that has options like new bucket, edit bucket, delete bucket, shared bucket, um, and then a list of all the buckets that you currently have. And then you have this pending tab. If you want to create a new bucket, you choose new bucket from that um, drop down. It's asking you to give it a name and a uh, description. Um, and there is an option here to um, to, to set this to be shareable or not. If you make a bucket shareable, it means that it can be accessed by any other staff member. But how this works is de also dependent on a the view container permission set up um, for your system, um, whether it's set at the consortium level or the system level. Um, and so you, you need to check and see how that works in your, in your system. Unfortunately, if somebody has access to your bucket, they can do anything they want to it. We'd really like to see something more like Google Docs where you can give people view permission or view and edit permission, but not delete or, or you know, more finely tuned um, permissions. Give permission to a specific person, not just um, clicking the shareable thing. Um, this is what somebody uses if they want to access your shared bucket. They have to have the bucket ID and they type or paste that bucket ID here and that will open the bucket for them. So if you want somebody to have access to it, you need to send them a message saying, please see my bucket number one, two, three, four, five. You'll find it interesting. The item bucket interface has those two tabs, um, bucket view, and I created a bucket, and my bucket is, is sitting here waiting for me to add some items to it. Um, it also has pending. When you're in the item bucket interface, um, you don't have a way to add items directly to the, to the bucket. You have to go to add them to pending. Pending is sort of the waiting room for the bucket. Um, so you have to add them to pending um, and then select them and tell them to go move themselves over into the bucket. So here I am on pending and I see that the only way here I have is to scan the items. And that's fine if I have the pile of items, I can scan them all. Um, it'll look very much like the item bucket list. I can um, select them and move them into the bucket. But there's no option here. Um, to upload a file or to use the copy and paste CSV or any of that, um, which is, whoops, which is, um, which is why the um, item status is is so useful. Um, so you may find yourself just using item status always to add things and then or at least if you're trying to use files, and then um, select them all and move them um, into an item bucket that way. 
Uh, you, you also, anytime you open an item record, um, so you're looking at a bib record and one of your items is attached and you click on view, um, anytime you're looking at an item, uh, one of the actions you have is to add items to a bucket. So you set up a bucket for something, maybe a, a display you're working on or something like that. Um, every time people think of another item that ought to be in there, you can just go and add it individually. Um, looking at my bucket, I did get these items in here and I've selected them all and I go to actions and I do have actions, but I have far fewer actions here than I had in item status. So if, if the action that you want to take on these items that you carefully put into a bucket isn't on this list, um, then um, you can use open in item status to get back into item status with this with everything that's in your bucket, um, where you have every conceivable action um, available to you. So those are the two things that have to do with item records. And now we're going to talk about bibliographic records. Uh, there are two options here. One is working with a basket. A basket is in both the public and staff catalog. Baskets are kind of temporary containers that are used um, to place multiple holds, that are used uh, in the public catalog to, um, to work with my lists. Um, they're, and they're used to um, select a group of items, basically to go shopping in your database, um, to select, uh, excuse me, a group of titles, and then move them into a, a bucket. Um, you really need to be careful working with baskets um, that you clear the basket and as, especially when you're placing holds so that you don't accidentally place holds for one person that include all the holds you just placed for somebody else. And records stay in baskets until they're cleared, explicitly cleared, or until the evergreen system uh, session ends. So I'm in the Angular, I'm in the staff client in the Angular catalog here, and I did a search on whales, and I'm shopping basically. So it's like, oh, I'd like this one and this one, and I can go on. Every time I click one, I can see that the basket um, counter here, there are 11 items, uh, excuse me, 11 titles currently in that basket. If I unclick this one, it would go down to 10. If I click this one, it would go back up to 11. So it, it, um, it's, it's kind of interactive shopping. Now, in my Make Believe project here, I'm putting together a, a basket to create a bucket um, to work with a carousel. So I'm intentionally not taking this one because it doesn't have a cover. And I'm not taking this one because I don't like the cover. Um, so whatever your project is, you, you may be um, choosing things for aesthetic reasons as well as how well they fit a project or, or whatever. So I've got some items here in my basket. One thing you can do with items in a, with, excuse me, with titles in a basket is place holds for the patron, for a patron. So I had a conversation with this patron. This is all make belief. I had a conversation with this patron and I helped them select four um, titles that they wanted, or they came in and asked specifically for these four titles. Um, I put them in a basket and then I clicked on the basket action to place a hold. Um, I need to get the patron's uh, barcode. If, um, if they are not handing me their card, I can um, search for the patron and bring it in that way. Um, and these are all the attributes of those holds and these are the titles. Um, and uh, this hold was uh, successful. I, I guess I mixed these up. I should have shown you hold pending and then I clicked on them and the, the hold was placed for all of them. One of the other actions for things that are in a basket is to um, move them into a bucket. And this is kind of the same issue as with, with items. Um, that basket is going to be cleared. You're going to finish your shift and, and log out. And, you know, those 
those things that you carefully hand selected um, and put in a basket are gone. Um, so that's where record buckets come in. So record buckets are a persistent, stays on the system until you delete it, um, folder or file of container of um, bibliographic records. And they can be used for multiple purposes, everything from merging duplicate records, um, batch editing, or building carousels. And they also have a search feature that's kind of interesting. So I selected some polar bear things. I have six things that I selected, and I want to use the basket action here to add the basket um, to a bucket. So I'm going to choose that. And now it is asking me what bucket. I think this is actually kind of a, a, a nice way to display this. So I have the option to choose an existing bucket, in which case I have this drop down that will show me all my buckets. Um, I have a tab here for new bucket, in which case it's going to ask me what I want to um, have for a name and description of that bucket. Or I could um, add it to a shared bucket, in which case it's going to ask me to put in the number. So either way, either the, any of these three ways, I am taking those six items and I'm adding them to an appropriate bucket. This is the record bucket interface, and we can get to that from the cataloging menu or from the splash uh, page, splash screen. Uh, this one has three tabs. Uh, just like the item buckets, it has the bucket view and it has pending. Um, so, and, and it has a menu that has new bucket, edit bucket, delete bucket, shared bucket, um, or create carousel from bucket. This one's new. Um, and then here it has a, a list of all the buckets that I've already created. Um, the bucket view, like the bucket view for items, doesn't have any options for um, adding records. So I come over to pending, hoping to find some options for adding um, bibliographic records, um, but I but there aren't any. Uh, we'll talk about the record query in a in a minute. So um, the best way that I found to add, um, or, or one way that I found to add um, bibliographic records um, to, a, to a record bucket is if you have the items because you did something to the items or you scanned um, the items, then you have the option to add this to a record bucket. So if I want to have the copies in a bucket, the items, I add it to an, them to an item bucket. If I want to have the bibliographic records, um, I add them to a record bucket. And you can also add um, titles directly to um, a bucket from the bib record. So I'm looking at this bib record, and I think this would be good for my project of, of whatever that is. And I can add this to the um, bucket that way. Um, I have. Here I, I have uh, my bucket view. Um, I've selected them all, and I have a number of actions for them. Um, show, show selected records in the catalog will open a separate tab for, for each record, which is handy if you have two or three. It's not so handy if you have many. Um, I can move the selected records to pending records. One of the reasons I might want to do that is if this has fiction and nonfiction or some other grouping, I might want to take all the fiction titles, send them to pending, remove them here, create a new bucket, and move them there. Um, pending, which is a little beyond what I'm going to talk much about in this session, but pending is what you use to split a bucket into two or more individual buckets, or to um, merge a group of, of uh, buckets together so that you can, it's a temporary holding space for a group of records um, so that you can bring them in and out of different buckets. Um, uh, I 
also have um, the ability to transfer titles here, title holds here, um, or to merge selected records. So this is how you merge records. You put the two records that you want to merge into a bucket, or you select the two records that you know you want to merge from a bucket. You have the option here of choosing a merge profile. Um, and you can choose like, well, which record do you want to end up with? So if this is the lead record, because I have decided this is a better record, a more complete record, um, then I would click use as lead record and I would merge the other one into it. Um, if I have three records and I see one that I don't want to have um, as part of this merge, I can remove that from consideration. The other nice thing here is that you have the ability to edit. Um, so you might want to make this be the lead record, but there's um, a summary note or something on this one that you want to retain so you can uh, move that over. So that's how um, you can merge records. Um, that third tab, record query, um, is a search option. So this is a way to search your entire bibliographic database um, for in any of the ways that you can um, search um, in the catalog. So I'm saying I want to look for the word ocean and I'm going to truncate it because I really want ocean, oceans, oceanography, and so on um, in a subject heading. So I'm doing this and it will go off and do the search. Now you have to watch your record query limit. I'm on a, this is a Noble training server and the record query limit is a thousand. We have bumped that way up on our production server because we use it a lot and want to have more than, than a thousand records. But you know, you do need to keep an eye on that and uh, so on. So this is showing me everything that we have in the collection that has anything to do with ocean and oceanography and so on. Now there may, it may find some unexpected things. It's a subject search, but it may find a book about somebody whose last name is ocean or other, other sorts of things, but um, it is pretty useful. And then I can put them in pending um, or in a bucket directly. The great thing about that record query, you can search author title, subject, or keyword. If you don't specify, you're getting keyword. You can limit it to items that are owned or licensed um, to your library if you're using located URIs um, using your library short name. Um, so in Noble's case, we do use for electronic resources, um, our records would have um, an 856 link with a subfield nine um, that says Wakefield or Melrose or, or whichever library um, licensed that. Um, you can use Boolean operators. So the ampersand ampersand is the Boolean operator and in Evergreen Speak. Um, the two pipe characters, the two vertical lines is the Boolean for or. Um, and you can kind of mix and match these. So um, this is a search that we have done a number of times. So I just want to know in the whole Noble database, including the electronic resources, I want to see everything that is about autism or autistic or autistic, any, any words that have to do with autism. Um, because we want to look at those and look at how old some of those titles are and whether there are titles that you would really want to weed because they are outdated information um, that you don't want to retain. Um, this is the ocean one, but I added site Wakefield so that I would only get things that are owned by Wakefield or that are um, electronic resources that we loaded for, for the Wakefield library. And then you can get fancy. So this is um, the subject Christmas. I'm looking for like, oh, Christmas in Holland or a Dutch Christmas or what's it like for Christmas in the Netherlands? So I'm searching for Christmas and then I put parentheses around this and I say, oh, it has to have the word Christmas and it has to have the word Netherlands or Dutch or Holland. I don't care any of those. 
And then this one, and this is a mini lesson on Boolean searching, but it's it's very helpful to get a whole file of these. Uh, we were looking for things about what um, traditionally were called learning disabilities, are more commonly now called learning differences. At some points we're called learning difficulties. Um, so I'm looking for anything that has learning or reading and it has disab something that implies that they're going to say disability or disabilities or difference or differences or difficulty or difficulties or it has the word dyslexia. Um, so you can really use this and get a, a, a very useful spreadsheet um, for a single library or across the consortium um, for what kind of resources you have um, um, in, a, in a particular area. Um, abrupt change of, <laughs> of topic here. Um, we have to look at baskets for patrons. So this is, and this is in the traditional catalog, which is what we're still using for the public. Uh, so I am logged in as a patron and I have selected a couple of titles that have to do with Greenland. I actually have 10 titles that have something to do with Greenland. And I have basket options. Um, I can place holds with them just like the staff could place holds. Uh, this is the old look of the interface. Um, what I showed you before was the Angular version um, in the staff client, but this is what patrons see. Um, and when they Elizabeth, place, yep. Can I just jump in real fast? There was a question about this looking different than what people are seeing uh, in their own consortia. And so uh, Jeff uh, noted that you, uh, you guys use 3.6.1? Yes. And so those of us like in Pennsylvania, we're still on 3.3. Uh, so this we, is coming attractions. It's coming attractions. Um, and so, so you, some people also may not be making uh, as much use of the Angular interfaces. So uh, just, just to let people know if, they're, if what you're seeing doesn't look familiar, don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I actually, in last year's version of this, um, I only used the, I didn't use any of the Angular catalog. Um, so I actually have, maybe I'll post both versions with both sets of screenshots. Um, it's all the same functionality, but different layout and, and so on. Right, yeah, the, it does the same things. It just yeah. looks a little bit different. Well, but it's helpful to see, to see both versions. Um, so this is uh, placing a hold. Um, it, for the patron view of placing a hold. Now you see the patron actually has a downloadable ebook here and that hold is not going to work. Um, but when they place the hold, they um, they get, oh, I guess I didn't do a screenshot of that. Um, they get a confirmation message, which will say successfully placed, successfully placed, no holdable copies available. So it will tell them um, whether or not they've been, they've been successful. Now, the other thing that um, patrons can do, I'll go back to presentation mode here. Just like staff can put things into a basket and then add them to a bucket, the patron version of that is to put things into a basket and then add them to a saved list. Um, so they're, they're my lists functionality. Uh, that's that's how they can do this. This replaces what was called temporary list um, previously and is, is actually much nicer because you can see it. Um, so the, this patron has put um, three things here and they want to add this basket to a saved list. Uh, again, I'm logged in to the, um, to the, as a patron. Um, I can create a new list here um, and give it the information and uh, for the title and so on, um, and whether or not I want this to be shareable. I'm actually going to show you one that, that this patron, this is a fake patron, that this patron, um, this fake patron fakely created. Um, so this is 
Um, Matt birds birds, and so it's books about birds. Um, I I stripped off the header so you could see more of the the items. Um, so this is a list that this that the patron can come back to for themselves if they want to go, you know, find their favorite bird books. Um, but it also has a URL that they can use because they said they wanted it to be public. Um, so they can send this to their friends or, you know, send this to their bird watching local email list or, you know, do anything else that they want with it. It's a, it's a way that patrons can create a, a shared list. Um, when a patron creates a shared list and makes it public, then there's a URL and the URL has a book bag number. Um, be behind the scenes, the system doesn't call these my lists, it calls them book bag. So if Matt posts his, um, his list and I really like it and I'm a staff member of the library, um, or if Matt, in fact, comes to me, he's going to come speak at the library and he wants to share this list. One of the things that we can do is open it as a bucket um, using this ID. Um, so I, and I love doing this because it feels, I don't know, cool. Um, so you have to go to the URL, get that book bag ID, and then lo choose load shared bucket bucket. This is a launch pad bug I submitted today. <laughs> um, uh, put in that number and load the bucket. And now I am back being a staff member and um, it has opened the list. Unfortunately, I apparently switched. <laughs> I apparently used the Greenland example for this screenshot. I'll straighten that out before I post these slides. Um, but the theory is still the same. Um, you can take that and open it as a um, record bucket, whether that's to check and see if your library has copies of all of these or, or um, to do something, something else with them. Maybe you want to make a carousel um, uh, for your uh, catalog of the of Matt Bird's bird books. And staff can do this too. So I'm in the public catalog and I'm logged in as a staff user. Um, you can you can use your evergreen credentials, your evergreen um, staff client login and password will also work in the public um, in the public catalog. And so here I um, put 10 uh, titles in a basket um, that were about, there, there were 10 of the books by Eric Carl, who I'm sure you heard has, has uh, just recently passed away. Um, I chose to make this um, a list and so it's giving me the create new list from basket option. So it's asking me for the title and the list description. It's asking me if I want to share this list, meaning if I want that to be public and have a URL that, can, that the public can access. And I do. And I want to move the contents of the basket to this list. And I do. Um, and so, um, when I click submit, it will give me this, this appearance um, of a public list that has a public URL that is all the things that I, I, uh, I created this in the public interface, um, at, but I have a, um, a real URL for it. Um, we actually do have some staff who've done things like this. Um, um, and, you know, it is, it is an alternative that people have. Now, I only have one thing to say about um, carousels, because in track two, immediately after this, there's going to be a very excellent um, session all about carousels. But I just want to mention something that is about the relationship between carousels and record buckets. Uh, I have this record bucket 
this is my Nordic Noir record bucket. And I want to create um, a carousel from this bucket. So this is a very handy option. And when I do that, it asks me what I want as a name for the carousel um, in case I don't want it to have exactly what the bucket has. So I gave it dark stories from the land of the midnight sun. Um, and I would click here for create carousel. And it has created the carousel, but it's making a copy of that bucket. It, it doesn't exactly tell you that. Um, you can see that here. This is the carousel I just created. And you can see that the bucket it's using is a system created bucket for carousel 46 that is copied from bucket 442, whatever that bucket was. Um, this, I don't believe that this column shows by, by default. Um, so it's, it's very easy to assume as we certainly did when we started using carousels, that you had this carousel and you turned it into a, excuse me, you had this bucket and you use that interface in buckets to uh, make a carousel out of it. And that if you wanted to remove or add some things to that bucket, that that would be a way to add or remove some things from the carousel. Um, but it's not because the carousel is working independently on the copy that it made at the time that you created the, the carousel. So you, um, you know, you do have, um, you do have a second kind of secret bucket that it, it, uh, um, that it created. And for more on carousels, I highly advise you to go to the carousel, carousel section in, um, in track two. Um, are there any questions? I should check the chat. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Not a ton of questions. Um, Let's see here. There was one about uh, the URL for the lists are persistent. URLs for the lists are persistent. And I believe that is true. Yes, the the, the list that's created in the public catalog, um, that is a persistent URL that will last until you or the patron goes in and deletes that, or they change it to make it not public anymore. And then uh, someone asked uh, what the carousels are used for. And uh, I would say definitely <laughs> go to the next presentation on carousels. Uh, yeah, the, the carousels are really awesome. They can display on your, your library catalog in the area below the search box and above the footer. Um, and they, you, you really, you really want to go to that, you really want to go to that that uh, that session. Um, oh, Jeremy says, we're experimenting with a WordPress plugin, library bookshelves by Gilderland Public Library um, that can display uh, bookshelves via ILS um, APIs, including Evergreen. Um, we're, exper we're, we're using that. Um, we're using, we're using that, that as well. Um, we're not we're probably we might be using it a different way than you're using it getting the data in a different way um, using a, a local tool but this it's a little bit frustrating to us we love the library bookshelves um, to do um, you know to put things on our wordpress sites and we love the carousels interface to put things on the catalog we just sort of wish we had one tool that would make a you know that would give us an easy way to put the same bookshelf, the same carousels in, in both places. Um, I, I will say about the library bookshelves car um, thing, if that's, <laughs> it's, it's really worth checking it out if you do use WordPress um, and the, the, um, the developer has been very responsive to adding things and, and uh, 
um, creating, you know, helping us work things out so they work as well as possible in our in our system. Um, but the integrated carousels for the catalog are are um, are really nice, and I will just as a promo to get you to go to that other session. This is what they look like and the kind of thing that, that our libraries are using them for. Uh, this is the Reading Public Library. Um, I Just a couple. Can you share yeah. your screen again? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was still, yeah. uh, You know, like yeah. an idiot, I was, you know, <laughs> scrolling through the uh, carousels expecting you to be impressed, but I hope you like it now that you can actually see them. And so then uh, one of the things about those that I'm sure they'll cover in depth in this other session is that you can actually have automatically generated yes. uh, book bags. Yes. Well, they're and not, sorry, I sh they're... I talked to them to make sure that we weren't going to have any overlapping material and stuff. So they've got all the, they've got all the cool stuff on on carousels and and uh, I I look forward to, um, to to going to that one. Um, I do have a list of answers to questions that I'm going to post along with the uh, the slides. Um, they, they're just some sort of like technical things that you would run across. Um, for example, when if you have a file of items and you um, use it to make a file of bib records, it um, it does dedupe that list of bib records. So if you have three copies, it's not going to put it in the file three times. If you have three copies on the same title, um, but it kind of it 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 kind of looks like it is. So I, I've got some um, some some things you may run across while you're working with the, the buckets and things. Ah, Melissa, I see. <laughs> How do you like my promo for the session? Well, if there aren't any more questions, I'll be posting all of this. I also have some screencasts on the merging and splitting of, of uh, buckets and some other things. Um, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. That was really instructive. Um, and I, I can tell you that I had a couple of people pinging me during the presentation about doing some of these things at our <laughs> libraries. So I can ensure you that it will uh, definitely be uh, definitely be useful for some of the people that I work with. Yeah, I, I'm also posting a list of my favorite, why don't you go add heat, heat to them, uh, oh, yes. related launchpad bugs. Yes. And there, uh, I think it was earlier today or yesterday, a session on learning to do that with Launchpad. So if you didn't catch that one, catch the, the YouTube recording when it comes out so that you can, can. Uh... Well, and that's the one that I said I had entered a Launchpad bug where it said um, open bucket, bucket, it had the word bucket twice. Uh -huh. um, that was the one that Taryn was using as like the, the example. Um, so we got some heat added to it, like because, <laughs> Just because it was the most recently added bug at the time that she opened the list. That's so. you should you should do that strategically. <laughs> I I really right I before need before the conference. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, thank you everybody.